Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. I'm Morielle, the host of the Stitch Wish podcast, and today is a fairly special episode where I'm going to talk you through my stash yarn, um, or at least some of it, and I'm going to ideally talk to you about how I'm going to use it up for this season. Now, there are a ton of things on my Ravelry queue, um, or maybe not queue, but I have like a whole favorites bundle for my fall winter knitting plans, and I've actually gotten through a ton of it already. Pretty pleased with my progress so far. I've been knitting for around um, like two months this season. So I kind of took a hiatus in the summertime because it was a project that fully broke me <laughs> and it fully like was too much. Um, so I took a break and I did just some crochet and now we're back in the knitting groove. And so I figured it'd be fun to talk about my stash and kind of have some uh, like laid out plans because not gonna lie, my yarn is being eaten <laughs> and I need to move it into clear plastic bins. But I thought for the meantime, it would be nice to have like a clear guideline on like what I want to knit with for this season and then put everything else away in storage so that way one i'm not sidetracked and distracted by other shinier stuff and two that my yarn is like properly stored because as much as i have like the cedar and the lavender and everything like it's just not in plastic and i think ultimately eggs can get in and it's just been like devastating and i have spent way too much money um on the yarn <laughs> to have it go bad so i wanted to do this not just for entertainment purposes but also for my sake so i have a little bit of sanity and clarity and restriction because i think sometimes creative restrictions are helpful and not harmful so the first pattern that i wanted to mention and yarn combination is for the bluebird cardigan now i will obviously put photos of everything up on the side so you can actually see more clearly but this is a steaked cardigan which is something that i'm really looking forward to doing i've never steaked before personally um, but it's something that a lot of people talk about and now that i know generally the gist of how you do it it shouldn't be too hard but i figure for my first steak project i am not gonna like fly by through the seat of my pants i'm actually gonna follow a pattern that is meant for steaking so this is the bluebird cardigan like i mentioned it comes in a really beautiful kind of cream and brown colorway i thought it would be lovely to do it in a pink and brown colorway so this is what i have so far I had the like very romantic idea of using up scraps from one project to carry over to the next project so I bought five balls of this yarn for a luma pullover and I only used three and a half um, so I thought it'd be nice to use like the one and a half balls that I have left in the next project so I thought this would be cute obviously it'd be way more brown than pink um, but this pink is not the brightest of pinks so the other option that I have was um, a strand of drops air now drops air is labeled as a bulky weight yarn and I really just don't think it is like you're kidding uh, I talked to a couple of knitters and they definitely say it's closer to like a DK weight so I think both of these being described as worsted is a little bit like mm, uh, I don't love that but you know given that it's gonna be stranded color work uh, and so you're gonna be carrying two together it could be a toss-up whether I do drops air or the Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. But anyway, the general color scheme is going to be pink and brown. And I have these perfect vintage buttons that I got at Rhinebeck for it. Now these um, were by that vintage button lady in one of these stalls. And unfortunately, I think this pattern only uses five buttons maybe. So I don't know whether I'm going to add a couple more buttonholes so that way I can get to seven buttons or if you know I'm just gonna use five and, and take two out or something like that. But I think this color combination will look really cute it's not a color combo i always wear like brown is definitely one a new color to my collection and two uh brown and pink is kind of a specific color combo so it's fine i have a pair of espresso brown shoes that i think will match and i generally wear a lot of pink so it should be fine um so that is the first thing probably going to be one of my next few cast-ons so that's pretty exciting i have a this is the reason why i really decided it was time to go because i had just had to get rid of some eggies and i lost some yardage here so this is a beautiful squishy alpaca yarn um it was labeled as a dk but now that i'm looking at it it's definitely closer to a worsted weight um i think this is 100 percent pure alpaca i don't remember the name of the label <laughs> i bought it at downtown yarns uh, and it was very very pricey so the fact that she is getting uh beat up is really frustrating i mean granted the damage didn't look too deep it looked very very minor you know inspecting it closer it doesn't seem like there's other parts of damage so once i hang this up it should be fine the only reason why all of these things haven't been hanged already is because i lost the little the little knob that attaches into the swift to hold it up in place got lost in my move and so all of my hanks have just been like stuck in this awful format because i haven't really been able to uh you know like hang them up properly so yeah i think this is going to be a perfect forever baby bonnet i have been talking about this pattern for a while it utilizes a smock stitch and some cute little face framing ruffles i don't think this is like the most flattering color around my face but it is so soft i genuinely don't care 
Um, and the yarn was of course sentimental because I bought it around Christmas last year so I think it would be nice to finally get going on that last season I thought about making it for springtime and then by that point it was just kind of like a little bit too late and I actually have a ton of this mohair because again uh, drops advertise this as a pink clear as day it is a beige and I don't think this is like even remotely close to pink but I'm thinking that if I hold these two together maybe we'll get like something that's a little bit more romantic because it has some fluff. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be scratchy. The thing about drops is that, you know, I've tried a lot of their mohairs. Some of them are scratchy, some of them aren't, but I also find that I can't tell whether they're going to be scratchy or not in the ball. I think it's not really strictly about the ball feel. I think it's something about like when you knit it up, sometimes it's scratchy and sometimes it's not. So if I really want to stash down aggressively, I would put them together and kind of really have like a beige moment. If I were <laughs> wanting to make something that I truly loved, I would probably go for an icier pink just to shift the tone of this to be a little bit brighter and not so creamy yellow. And I think dulling it down with a beige will make it even more neutral. <laughs> and I think the neutral colors definitely don't wash me out per se, but they don't look best on me. Um, the good thing about the baby bonnet is I already have the pattern. I attempted it last year when I was a beginner, when I was in my like accessories knitting phase because I figured I would probably do better knitting a ton of accessories over knitting sweaters. The problem with knitting accessories is that they can still be pretty difficult um, and so doing like a smock stitch was a little bit too complicated for me and the pattern writer has a very sparse style of writing patterns. I think this is her first and only pattern. It's like g g g g g G -g 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 -g. like it's a very strange username i haven't really seen her around much um and I, I think she's just like an independent artist who makes this stuff in new york city but i don't think she sells a ton of patterns so yeah i wasn't ready for it last year but i think this year i'm ready to tackle it the next thing on my list is just a free little cowl this is called the milky way cowl and it's cute it's like a like a traditional almost like fair isle star pattern and i thought i would just do it in blue and white um i'm not fully convinced i love the blue and white i was thinking maybe i would do blue and brown or i was thinking also maybe i could do like this blue and white like that might be a better contrast than this one um this is cloud paca from knc at joann's and i like it because it's really soft it's mostly baby alpaca there is a degree of superwash merino and then a little bit of polyamide um and this of course is my patents classic wool worsted which i use all the time i have a ton of back stock of it i'm thinking now to stop buying it like even today i have a michael's coupon that i would normally not even hesitate to pick up another one of these because i love this yarn so much it's such a workhorse it is really durable it's one of the only natural wools they sell at a big box store but I'm just worried about like my storage situation so tbd on whether or not i want to do this color combo or this color combo and the one that she has in the actual pattern description is brown and blue and i thought that might be interesting but it i don't know i don't know how i feel about this contrast like maybe that's a little bit too much it could be good it could be good i'm not sure i can't say that i have feelings either way about what i would do um but you know if we're gonna get into color combos there's just there's a lot of options i think the only thing you want to make sure is that you have enough contrast between your colors but i don't think that's a problem um but in any way it's a free cowl i think this could be easily done in a couple days like definitely within a week i just want to make sure that it's nice and comfy around my neck i think this would be a really great gift knit uh, if you have people in your life who are interested in like something around the neck i just have never really been a cowl person like before knitting i had never even owned a cowl it was not something that i had in my fashion repertoire even though like i have a, like i do like to accessorize i have a lot of stuff um i was definitely more of just like a traditional scarf girly so yeah milky way cowl definitely on the list definitely one to check out because it is a free pattern and um, i will say a lot of the patterns that i'm like quietly interested in are free just because it's easier right this is the eddie bauer wool packa now i found this in store once and i bought all of the yarn they had i think i got like three balls um, but they don't have more of it i still can't find it at all anymore it is actually made in turkey um, and it is a 80 20 superwash yeah 80 merino 20 alpaca yarn mine is in the dk weight so it's a perfect like true dk i think um, this is a beautiful lapis lazuli color it's called lapis and it's just gorgeous it has some of that like beautiful alpaca halo and it is incredibly soft and squishy my plans for this are a marisia cardigan and i bought buttons for this a while ago and i bought several and i didn't really know which ones i wanted to do all of them i think are from joann's except some of them this one might be from hobby lobby i don't know i'm a big like button collector even before i even know what to do with it so i have three balls of this or maybe four and this was one option it's like a pearly blue shift button very cute 
This is a heart shaped button. Also very cute. And then these are tone on tone buttons, which I also think work almost perfectly as a color match. So not sure which ones I would end up going with. Of course, I have like a whole collection of buttons here. Like I have a contrast button as well, if I wanted to do like a contrast tone. But yeah, lots of different choices. I think the Mauricia cardigan might be really nice. I talked to the Red and Rose designer and she said that the button band is actually knit with the cardigan so you don't go back up and pick it up and it's faux cables not real cables so as much as i was not super excited about knitting flat because you don't have to pick up for the button band it might actually just be um quite interesting and enjoyable for that case alone um and i think that'll be a nice use of this merino okay this is my harito from noro and i bought this yarn specifically for a sweater um from james watts called ugh, i don't remember the name but it fades in two directions and I thought that was really nifty um, but I knit one of his patterns and I just don't think there's enough give for the bust shaping and I also don't know about this fabric for such a like densely knit t-shirt. I think there's something that I'm realizing about knitting short sleeve woolen garments that is just like not particularly useful for me as a person. I tend to prefer having long sleeves year round. Not like out of modesty per se but just like I, I like having my arms covered and I don't mind having like something sheer or like something netted but because a lot of his stuff is like fairly tightly knit um, and this one in particular looks like it has a fairly tight knit uh, fabric I was just like let's just do something that I already have in my stash which would be the Monday sweater so I haven't knit this up in a gauge swatch yet I saw a Danish Instagrammer do a Monday sweater in what looked very similar to this color combination it was a self striping noro yarn and then it was toned down with a very very neutral mohair now this is where my big stash of wrong photographed mohair comes in handy one i will never be buying from drops online ever again uh it's just like way too unpredictable i have a local yarn store near me that carries drops and i might go in there and take a look at their colors and kind of like get a reference for what things look like because it is just absurd how the wool warehouse photos and the actual images that they put on the site and they look so hd and they look you know color graded to fill i mean I, it must just be that they use some kind of setting on their screen or I have something on my screen that makes them look totally different because this was definitely labeled a pink like this color was definitely a pink and now that I have it it is just it's brown okay it's, it's beige um, but I think it would tone this color down quite nicely to be a little bit more wearable I don't necessarily look great in soft neutral um, like earthy tones I ideally wouldn't want to tone this down but I do think I was so swayed by the thing that I saw online and it would get this uh, sport weight up to closer to like a true DK. Uh, I don't think it's actually labeled a DK right now. It's already mentioned as like a 4.0, 4.5 and I don't think I would love that fabric. I generally on principle tend to prefer something that's on this, the thicker side. And I do have a contrast yarn to use with this. So I could do contrast neckband and ribbing and I think it'd be fine. So that is what I want to do for this guy. Next I have yarn for a another free pattern so this is a great one if you also want to stash this with me this is called fake sweater scarf by Susanna Mueller and I was thinking of using these fabrics together this is a beautiful Lanagato silk mohair it is a perfect purpley pink this is in the color 30484 but it's really the only purpley pink they have I bought it on Amazon for a fairly reasonable price and then this is Barocco um I think fine it's anyway it's their two ply or their four ply it's their fingering weight yarn you know what, maybe this is a two-ply. It's very, very springy, and I don't love fingering weight yarn, but I think when you hold it with something else, you get like a standard DK gauge, and I think it would be really lovely to knit this faux sweater with. Is it the best color match for my face? I don't know. I think it would have been nicer to do like a white or something. I had even thought about doing like a fluffier yarn, something closer to like a drops air, because I think that would be nice and soft, but I do only have enough of this for something like a fake sweater. I was going to do a vest, and I realized I was playing yarn chicken with the mohair and I was thinking maybe I would just buy another pack on Amazon. But because I have two of these, I think it'll be enough to do the faux sweater. Um, as you can see from the photo, it's a faux sweater that you drape over your shoulders and you tie it kind of at the front and it kind of gives you that like country club chic look. I think it'll be a really cute pop of color, especially on an all white or all black outfit. Uh, and the Monogato mohair definitely feels way softer than the drops mohair. But you know, you, you do what you can. I mean, it's... <sighs> It's not like on the on the ball it feels that different. Again, I think it's like once you knit it up, it truly does probably show like the difference in quality, right? Um, but I think I have just enough to do that sweater and it'll be nice. It'll get some pink yarn out of my stash. 
Next, I have a couple balls of this big Eco Plus from Cascade. Uh, and I have two colors that I want to do two distinct projects with. The first one I started a port sweater with um, and I really enjoyed the outcome. I was using the Make It Tweed from Rico Design and I was getting this really, really cute fabric. So yeah, I actually did like the entire back, the, the front shoulder, and I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's, I, like I think the, the fabric is so cute, but it's almost like a little bit too cute and it has crossed the line from cute into almost, dare I say, unprofessional. Like I just don't love it in a bigger garment. I did the swatch with the Make It Tweed and I thought it was like the best thing since sliced bread. And this yarn is absolutely the most infuriating thing to work with. It just wants to slip and tangle on itself. Like it just wants to, it just doesn't want to be cooperative. <laughs> it is the one of the worst yarns I've ever used. Does it create a really beautiful effect? Yes. Do I love it on this um, Eco Plus? No. So I'm abandoning this project, but that means I have a sweater's quantity of this blue yarn and a sweater's quantity of this navy yarn. And I have one in lilac, one in pink, and then like there's a lot because my friend and I got these for $10 a ball. Now this is a 400 something yard ball <laughs> and we got it from yarn.com. They were doing like an insane blowout sale. And then she stopped knitting. So then she gave me all of her balls. I still had my balls. So now I have like four or five sweaters quantities worth of this really luscious, very, very soft yarn. Um, it definitely gets thin, like once you use it. It's labeled as a bulky yarn. I think you could definitely just treat it as a worsted weight, maybe an Erin weight yarn. But I'm really looking forward to making a Dagmar jacket or Dagmar sweater and an Eva cardigan or a cardigan number nine. I think I'm giving up on the port sweater, at least this iteration of the port sweater that has the little tweety bits, because again, I just think the fabric that you're getting, it doesn't look quite as profesh as I would have liked, um, which is a shame because I do think it's really cute and I knit so much of it already. And I don't know if I'm going to salvage this yarn or not. I mean, to have to take it apart and take the tweed apart is just gonna be a nightmare because I hate this, I hate this tweed. It is so frustrating. I think the effect is really beautiful and the rainbow flecks you get are really, really stunning. Genuinely, I think, the actual rainbow flex are gorgeous. I just don't know if I love it with this blue base. I think it would have been cuter with like a pink or even when you do it like with the beige to make a Noro dupe. But anyway, these yarns I have plans for. So again, like I said, this is probably gonna be Dagmar, either a Dagmar cardigan or a Dagmar sweater. I'm probably gonna start with the sweater first because it's gonna be a little bit easier for me. And then this one is gonna be some kind of regular cardigan, either the Levitate or the Eva or the cardigan number nine. Yeah, my favorite thing Snitwear is not my favorite designer. I find that her writing is sometimes a little bit opaque to understand, um, but now that I've knit quite a few more garments, I feel like I understand the technique a little bit better. Okay, let's move on. I have two special birthday yarns. Uh, I call these my mold yarns, affectionately, because they do kind of look like mold. I bought these from Nitty City in New York on my birthday last year, and I don't want to pull out the little thing in the middle that tells me where they're from, because then I, I guarantee I'm going to mess it up. And the lady who was spinning my yarn was saying that it's really hard for her to um, to to ball up these balls of mohair properly because they so frequently want to go haywire. So I am taking that as my cue to not mess around with it too much. But this is my first like expensive hand dyed mohair um, in a while because the first ones I ever bought were from Rhinebag and I made a very, very cursed Sophie shawl. Yeah, it was not good. <laughs> and since then, I've really only used cheap mohair from like Drops or... Yeah, like I guess I've, I've purchased a couple of those like on Amazon. There's like a couple of Chinese uh, companies that either make real mohair or synthetic mohair or something. But yeah, these are like my little moldy yarns. And with this, I'm gonna pair it with my Drops Lima to make a pressed flowers kerchief. I think this will be cute. I don't know if it actually will be cute. I think it will be cute. This is again, a color scheme that I'm not super familiar with. I don't really know how I would match this. Like maybe with brown, maybe not with brown. Maybe I should have done the whole thing with brown instead. That might be a better color combo, what do we think? Do we wanna do the brown, the teal? Not sure. And while I'll have you, this was the original color combo for my Luma pullover. So that's also on the needles. I definitely should make a Luma pullover with these two as well. I already made one of my Luma pullovers and it was really hard to read the graphic design because I used a self-striping Noro yarn, which was silly of me. I wanted it because I wanted a fun pop of color, but I didn't think about how the stripes would definitely get in the way of actually seeing the floral design. So I do need to make another one in a more cohesive and like normal color scheme. Okay, and then 
I have a cozy winter cap yarn. This is a fun little like bonnet with a tie. I had a bunny hat and a bonnet from last year that I don't know where they went. I moved and I thought I brought them with me and now they're missing somehow. So I don't know where they are. I definitely need to make a new bonnet. And this is the bonnet yarn that I want to use. It is very, very fluffy. It's very warm. I would like to make it fairly wide so that it covers the majority of my head and just leaves the front and the back out. Um, and I think bonnets, and I mentioned this before, but bonnets generally I think disrupt the hair a little bit less than hats. And I'm not a huge beanie person. So this is again a free pattern from, I think her name is Lorelei Designs. She is really cool. She has a YouTube channel. It's kind of like gothic vintage fantasy core. She's fantastic. I'm glad I found her on Ravelry and she says she makes these in a ton of different colors to match like different outfits. So I think that'll be a really nice easy kind of like stash and buster to have a ton of these in different colors. I'm thinking my first few will be this baby pink. Maybe I'll do a white. Maybe I'll do a red and then we'll call it a day. And I think I have one more in here. I have this Highland Designs wool in a really cute periwinkle color. I don't know if you can see, but there's definitely specks of purple in there. It's like purpley, pinky, and a little bit of yellow and dusty white. This is going to be a dupe of a Sandus Garn sweater. I have the Amy sweater already. I don't have the yarn that's purplish in there. I would really, really love to get another one from Highland Wool to get that exact dupe, to get a dupe of those two colors at the same time. If I really wanted to, you know, be frugal about it, I think I could probably mix these two together because even though this Highland Designs is a worsted and the one from Cascade is a bulky, you can see that they actually end up looking pretty similar weight-wise um, if I stretch them out equally. So I think I could definitely do a navy on blue stripe, but a navy on blue stripe sweater is just like not as interesting as a navy on burgundy stripe sweater. So I am thinking if I get through a lot of this yarn from Stash, I might treat myself and get some of the matching burgundy yarn from this same woolen collection line. I remember getting it from the Endless Skein. I think, yeah, this is <laughs> this is the store that I got it in. I think it was in Cold, Cold Spring, New York. This is a really cute like skiing town, um, not super close to where I live, but I went last year and I bought three balls of this to make a scarf hat. Uh, it was a little bit too rustic for me at the time and I didn't really like it based on the pattern that I was knitting and then I didn't want to do it again in a different thing. So I think this will be better repurposed as a dupe sweater and then that way I'll be able to use my Amy pattern that's sitting in my stash and I'll be able to buy some yarn and have one Highland Design sweater because I don't really, um, I don't really branch out and use that many new yarns, actually. Granted, that is a lot of yarn. I think if I can knit everything that I just mentioned, that'll be amazing. But if I have somehow more room on, on the needles or, you know, in my life, I have a couple more things that I would like to do. One is the Moynier sweater. I would like to do it in a Christmas red with a fluffy, fluffy white yarn for the colorwork yoke. Um, I would like to re-knit my Levitate wrap, ideally in a petrol blue. I have another one of the Eco Pluses, but in kind of like this color. So it's definitely um, not navy. It's definitely more of a, a tealy petroleum green blue. And then I wanted to make a Super Celine uh, or a Gwen mini shawl, something that is color work. Oh my God, no, I forgot. I wanted to make a Moodiversary. Okay, I bought the pattern for the Moodiversary sh uh, slipover, which is the Spectacle Strike, uh, which you might know them from the wave sweater that was going viral this summer. Um, but they have a, uh, a sweater and a slipover pattern that is a bunch of smiley faces. And then for their anniversary, they made a version of that smiley face sweater with a lot of colors. And I thought it would be really cool to combine some of my previous scraps into one big sweater. So I have pink, purple, and then baby pink. And then I wanted to add a blue, and a brown, yeah, and then maybe a gray. So I was thinking this might be a really nice color combo. Uh, it's a little too cohesive though. There's something about the original Spectacle Strick version that is pretty like chaotic. Um, and this I feel like is a fairly contained color palette. I might add in some yellow or some other colors to make it a little bit more interesting, but yeah, I just, I, I vaguely remember feeling called to try like something that's a little bit more crazy out there because one it's a it's a slipover so it's small and two uh because it's got very very small quantities of yarn and there's a lot of yarns i think it's like nine or ten or eleven different yarns that you need to use because there are so many yarns i could use it as an opportunity to use it a lot for my stash and then as another color work project i have the gwen mini shawl 
I have in my head an idea that I want to do one shawl a year. Last year's shawl was my pressed flower shawl, and of course I'll be finishing it, <laughs> like probably this calendar year. But that means that for next calendar year, which is my winter of 2025, I'll be able to make another shawl, and I think the Gwen mini shawl will be great. I'm calling it a not mini shawl because the pattern writer made it a fingering weight project, and therefore the scale of it is slightly mini. But when I make it, I'm going to make it with like full size either DK worsted weight yarns. That's just like where generally my stash is and i think because so much of my stash is that weight it's a lot easier to mix and match so i don't see that changing very soon but when i make that it'll probably make it more of like a full-size regular shawl she is i think best known for her scout series so there's a really really beautiful scout scarf scout shawl and then scout mini scarf and so all of her stuff is very very beautiful but because the scout series is in tarja uh, and the gwen series is stranded color work long story short i think the gwen might be the one that i have my heart set on just for ease of use and also because the color scheme is just a little bit more like comprehensible for me so that is everything for now i think if i actually go into my you know my actual fall winter plans there's a lot more in there like there's an entrelock headband i have a magnolia bloom i have um the weekend hat some repeat patterns that excuse me, we're already in my stash or in my pattern library. So, you know, it wouldn't be very difficult for me to do. I also have a snowflake mitten from Drops Design that I think would be nice because it might match that cowl that I wanted to knit. So if I wanted to do a matching set, I think that might be nice and effective. There is a beautiful sweater called the Frame Sweater that is quite nice and the lovely navy color. It's actually really similar to this navy and I think that looks like perfect as is. So yeah, lots of different options. I just wanted to come on here and at least like put them out here <laughs> just so I have uh, a little bit of not accountability but at least a record of things that I wanted to make this season and this is a very very exhaustive list I don't anticipate actually being able to knit everything on this list but if I even get a fraction of the way there I think I will be pretty proud of myself so with that being said I think that is everything I have <sighs> talked again so much my throat hurts I need to go get a sip of water drink some tea and with that being said thank you so much for watching please let me know what your stash is like if you're trying to stash down. I think generally if I finish all these projects I will be more than 10,000 yards down in my stash and obviously it won't make that much of a dent in my big bookcase but you know we will work on it. I think I have more than enough yarn for an entire year of just knitting from stash. I'm not gonna make uh you know hard and fast rules but I think generally you know seeing so much yarn and like seeing the eggs has made me very very aware of like being on a no buy <laughs> so yeah I think that's everything I have for you guys today thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one bye all right as a fun little update I wanted to show you my shelf this was full to the brim and now we only have the top ones filled and I think this is a pretty good representation of the colors that I like to wear I'm whispering because my husband is on a call in the other room but I have my narrow yarn that I want to hold with that mohair. I have this that I want to turn into a Dagmar jacket. This is my puke color <laughs> yarn that I'm going to turn into a pressed flower shawl. This is a color work pop of color. Um, I have my um, Amy striped sadness carn dupe. The Mauricia, oh, in the back is that cobalt color. Uh, of course, I have like a balls of white. This is for a salmon sweater I'm working on right now. Forever baby bonnet. Um, we have the Luma Gray. This is a deep chocolate brown that I'm going to use for uh, the body of a sweater and some color work. Then I have my beautiful navy, my petrol, the pastel pinks that I'm going to use for the cozy cap. I have some of the sweaters that I'm working on now, like the Augustine's number four is using this. Um, I have some lilac. This is old ranunculus yarn. And yeah, generally all of that fits in four little quadrants. I have two large bins of yarn that I need to put in long-term storage, but I think generally this is going to reduce my decision fatigue by a ton.